You know, and it's true, after 24 years in naval aviation, both as a photographer and as an aircraft maintenance officer, and with the continuous improvement focus the last six years, I transitioned to the pharmaceutical industry with Cattle and Pharma Solutions. It provides goods and services by means of development, manufacturing, and packaging for major pharma, biotechnology, and healthcare consumer services. At a high level, there is no real difference. You know, organizations like to believe they're very unique, and they have a lot of things that make them stand out, whether that's through regulatory requirements, through complex processes, interdependencies, or intense competition. Um, one instance you could refer to with pharma would be the Federal Drug Administration as a regulatory agency. In aviation, we had the Federal Aviation Administration, so therefore both industries are very highly regulated. It's when you get down a little farther that the nuances stand out. The differences I've experienced are really twofold. One, this is a for-profit organization versus the not-for-profit that we existed with in the Department of Defense. And the other would be, there's a general perception that within the military or in the Navy that you're allowed to give an order and someone must follow it. Uh, that's not really as much a difference as you might think. It's based on hierarchical structure. At its core, though, there's still people involved and it still requires a level of negotiation. Well, process improvement deals with three things. You deal with the people, the process, and then a customer deliverable. At a high level, all those things are the same. Um, most importantly, the people. Right? Those are the things that everyone will face challenges as. Change is difficult for people at times, and ensuring you're managing your change correctly and communicating is a common theme across all of it. In addition, we all believe, like I said before, that we're unique, so we have to get past those initial barriers that said you can't do here what you did someplace else because it doesn't match. Well, I haven't been, only been with them a short time for three months. My initial focus has really been on the onboarding process where I've traveled to many of our different sites within the business units to see how they operate and learn the business itself. Within Catalent, there's a strong support from our chief executive officer down through our executive leadership to our site leaderships that operational excellence is truly a vehicle for growth and prosperity for this organization. Um, we're very heavily involved with Lean. We do a lot of things with 5S, with Gimba, with the Visual Factory and Root Cause Analysis. They've been on the journey for about four years now and it's, it's very exciting to be part of an organization that has a lot of energy top to bottom and a lot of support to move forward with change. Well, I think leadership qualities depend on a situation um, and I think in process improvement these are five qualities that I've learned to rely on especially when entering a new organization or working with a new team. First being perspective and maintaining a healthy look at what you're working with. Understanding that you only see a small piece of that puzzle and that people within the process have answers as well. So get the entire picture and understand it before making a decision based on that process. The other one would be respect. Okay? Within that process, those people have worked very hard at accomplishing the tasks that are set forth, building their process up to the level it is. Respect the work that they've done, and don't be that guy who shows up and says, I can fix everything that's wrong here, because it really is disrespectful to the people. You have to have some humility, right? Just because you're a green belt or a black belt or you have some kind of training doesn't make you a level above anyone else within the organization. You have a set of skills that when matched up with the skills of the subject matter experts have an opportunity to make improvements within a process for your customer and to create a better working environment for them. So again, be very humble in your approach. Engage in active listening. You know, we constantly hear we have two ears and one mouth so we should listen more than we speak, but it goes beyond that. The majority of communication is nonverbal. Take the time to listen, repeat back, and truly understand what another person is saying this is very important, especially when you start to go across cultural boundaries. And then lastly, you really have to ignore the last place. We've all been someplace before, but we can't always carry with us, with us into the next place we go. I think if we all think back, and, and it may not be something that's very apparent to us initially, we've been part of an organization where someone has joined us and they've come in and they've always referred back at this place in the organization we did this and it was so much better or I've done this in the past and well you know back here and it becomes such a 
such a huge drag on people that instead of focusing on what you're communicating to them, they're finishing your sentences when you say it back and they'll, they'll name the place for you. Um, I've seen organizations or places I've worked where we had people writing tick marks on the board to count the number of times someone said it in a day. At that point, you've lost the ability to effectively communicate with your team. Relish the knowledge and skills you've gained from previous experiences. Utilize them to make emphasis for key points. But again, it's part of being respectful. You're part of a new organization now. Focus on that organization and do what you can for them. Well, and, you know, the short answer is yes, they're the same. The long answer is it really depends. Leadership is a very dynamic environment based on both the people that are involved in that and the situation that they're going through at the time. One of the most important qualities for a leader is to be flexible and to be able to adapt to the situation at hand. Um, for process improvement, those skills that I've just mentioned have helped me lead teams, very basic teams. There are other skills that you can add to it. One of the key things for a leader to focus on is maintaining balance for themselves and for the people they work with. That balance is work and life. Um, that's always a good trait to follow. Being self-reflective is helpful. It's one of the ways I started to learn and develop some of the skills I have. And then trying to set both yourself, the organization, and the people who are working for you up for success. Again, as long as you're focused on people and not just on results as a means to an end, I think you'll do very well as a leader. The first thing is, you know, and I talk about a little bit in the article, is to understand that you, as you've gone through your training, have learned a new language. Not everyone understands that language, and, and you don't get any bonus points just because you can speak about Pareto diagrams or statistical analysis or anything else. As a green belt or black belt, one of your jobs is to demystify the process improvement world and break it down in terms that everyone can understand. Be very humble. Take notes on how you handle situations and reflect on them so that you can continue to grow and prosper as you move forward. And as always, develop your network and seek out advice from your peers. They'll be very happy to help you and communicate with you on those challenges.